This is a microphone test using the lavalier mic versus the camera mic. This is just a demonstration of how you can sync the audio and video on two separate files. All right, let me just show you now why you might want to use a standalone recorder in a situation like the one I was just filming in. The reason is because the camera is so far away from the area where I was recording. So even an external mic would struggle at that distance. That's probably a good 40 feet away from that tree from where I'm standing. All I'm using for the audio in this video is an inexpensive lavalier mic. And I'm using my cell phone to actually work as a voice recorder. And the app I'm using is just called audio recorder. I have an Android phone. I'm sure there's something similar for iPhone. This is a nice app because it will record indefinitely. You can record as long as you have memory on your phone. And also it's real easy to use. So I've got it recording right now and that's where this audio is coming from. This app is truly free. There's no ads or anything on it and it will record as long as you have memory on your phone. And another nice feature is you can turn your screen off to save your battery time and you can go right back in and it never stopped recording that whole entire time. So that will save on your battery life if you're out and about and then wanting to record audio using this setup. There are a lot of inexpensive action cameras out right now that do a really good job on the video end, but the audio is almost always not good. So this might be an, another option for you to get better quality audio from your camera set up without spending a fortune on a more expensive camera. You can still get good quality audio by using nothing more than a cell phone and an inexpensive lavalier mic. So if you're using a standalone audio recorder in conjunction with your video files, you're going to have two files. You're going to have a video file that's going to have some audio on it more than likely. And you're going to have a audio file. And in order to get this to work, you're going to need to sync your video and audio together. And this is the way I do it. Um, there's a lot of different ways and there are some programs that will do it for you. I'm using Flowblade here and I'm just going to show you a pretty quick and easy way of doing it. Uh, if your video editor shows your audio waves on your video screen, this is my video section of my timeline that's in purple here. Um, you can see these waves and that are that is the audio on this section um, and I've got this close to where I believe this part of the audio file lines up with this part of the video file but I'm going to play this back and you can hear that it is out of sync okay okay audio and video sync. audio and video sync So as you can see, the audio file is ahead of the video and audio file. So what I want to do is line this up. I want to bring this part of the video file back this way. So in order to do that, what I found is the easiest way to do this is to find a peak in a valley that corresponds. And this area right here corresponds to this area. So what I'm going to want to do is come over to this video section here and I'm at the tail end of that first peak. What I want to do then is line the tail end of this peak up with that one. And it's real easy to do. I'm just going to come over here and mark this area. So I found the tail end of this peak here and I'm just going to count back how many frames I'm going to move till I get to the bottom of that peak. One, two, three, four. Looks like four would be about how far I want to go back. Let's see where that starts there. Okay. Yeah, okay. So from the tail end of this peak, if I go back four frames, one, two, three, four, that puts me right at the beginning of the audio. So I'm going to mark that and I'm going to split that video and I'm going to delete this section of the video. Now at this point, the video is going to be ahead of the audio. 
So what I want to do now is come back to the audio file and I've come to the back side of that peak right there and I'm going to count back four frames. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to split that and delete that section of audio. Now my audio and video should pretty well sync with each other. And one way you can tell real quick how close they are to each other is to leave the audio turned on and play it back on both the audio and the video files. If the audio is turned on on both um, and they're out of sync quite a bit, you're going to hear a lot of echo. Uh, if they're close together, there'll be very little echo to none. So let's see what this one sounds like now. Okay, audio and video sync. That sounds pretty good to me. So I'm gonna come back to the beginning of this video and I'm just gonna turn off the audio on the video. Uh, that's been muted now. So when I go to render this, now that I've muted this video line, it's only gonna pick up the audio that's in the audio file. So let me go ahead and play this back now and make sure that the snap of the finger seems to correspond with the snap that's on the audio file. Okay, audio and video sync. That sounds pretty good. And now I'm just going to go to a different section of this video file and I'm going to turn back on the audio on the video and just see, make sure that there's not a bad echo going on here later in the video. I'll just go down to this area right here and play that back. So this might be an, another option for you to get better quality audio. All right, now I'm going to just turn that off there and you'll see how much difference there is between the audio that's on the video file and the audio that's on the audio file. The audio file is very consistent because I'm using the lavalier mic so it's always the same distance away from my mouth. There's not a lot of variation in in the volume levels. So from your camera setup uh, without spending a fortune on a more expensive camera all right, now I'm going to back that up and you'll hear the difference then between the audio on the video file and the audio on the audio file. The, at this point, I was kind of far away from the mic that was built into the camera, so it's noticeably quieter. On the video end, but the audio is almost always not good. And it almost has an echo effect to it. And I think that's because of the size of the room and the sound reverberating around the room. Um, so now I can just mute the audio on the video and I will have a better quality audio product in my final video doing it this way. I hope that makes sense to everybody. It's a pretty easy process and it's really not that time consuming. Uh, the hardest part is just trimming those down initially to get them close to the ballpark and from there you can just count frames and look at your at your peaks and get your audio and video synced up pretty quickly so anyway that's how you'll sync the audio file with the video file thanks for watching and take care one two three